Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tejesh Kumar, and uh, I am working as a mentor. And I am working as a client specialist in Clean Code Institute. Uh, I am mentor for um, especially especially for the MEM stack, which is the uh, combination of a full stack development, which is MongoDB, ExpressJS, React, and uh, JavaScript as well as <coughs> Node.js. Okay, this is my tech stack, and uh, today we will see. It is a demo kind of class. Okay, today we will discuss about the how the components will work in how the components and the component based architecture in React and what are the types of components and how rendering occurs. All these things we will discuss today. Okay, okay. Let me share my. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, the components in React. These are the building blocks of. Uh, basically, we call it as a building blocks of uh, user interface. Okay. Basically, what happens in React? The popularity of React has increased due to this component architecture. Component architecture. Okay. Let's see uh, how they are. I said like uh, these. Uh, the components are the fundamental building blocks of our uh, interface. Okay. They represent independent and as well as reusable pieces of code okay that encapsulates a specific part of our logic let's see how the uh, the definition of components components are fundamental fundamental building blocks building blocks of react react Okay, components are the fundamental building blocks of React. Components, okay, components. These are reusable. These are reusable. Reusable pieces of code. Reusable pieces of code. Which can, which can encapsulate, encapsulate specific logic okay if you see here i said components are the fundamental building blocks of react and these reusable pieces of the code okay we can reuse the one kind of logic here see if i suppose i created a, let me let me take uh let me take uh let me take one application here how the application and the user interface looks like let's see now <clears throat> Now imagine this was our landing page, application landing page. Let's imagine it was an Amazon landing page. What are the things we will uh, see? I mean, uh, in the starting of the home page or the landing page. Let's see the things we will observe in the landing page. One is navbar, navbar, and maybe in some apps we can see the sidebar as well, sidebar as well, and this is the main page. This is the main page, I mean main content, and we can see footer as well. We can see footer as well. Okay, imagine this is navbar, navbar, and this is sidebar, and this is for the main content, main content, and it is footer. It is footer. Now, I said React is a component architecture, component based architecture. Okay. How it looks like means see, if you, I mean, if you are building the application in normal uh, by using the JavaScript HTML, okay, in every page, we have to include all these logics, all this code as well. Okay. In every page, we have to, I mean, we have to paste a navbar code and a sidebar code, main content code and footer code. If I want some other place in product page, also I want navbar. So there also I have to keep this navbar as well. So, so but in React, it is a different case. Only one time we will write this code. One time we will write this code by creating the component. For suppose I am creating a component navbar.jsx. So, okay. So here I created a one component there, navbar.jsx. Okay. I created a one JSX file that is a one component. There, 
I write the code regarding to the navbar and logics and all those kind of things. I had write the I had write there in the navbar that JSX file. It is a one component. So for suppose I am creating a pages now. There is a landing page, products page, and checkout page. If I want the navbar there as well, I no need to write. I mean again and again that code actually. So just I will export there from the navbar the JSX file. I will export there and I will import here wherever I want. Just I will call. Just I will call it. I mean component. Okay. So that is the I mean uh, better thing. I mean to for maintenance for for the maintaining our application. I said uh, it is a great thing. This component based architecture is a best thing. I mean the great thing. And it is very easy to debug. If we are facing any error, it is very easy to debug. And and it is not very complex. Okay, so by simpler, simpler. Uh, we are dividing our application into small, small chunks like now, our side, our main content and footer. Like that, we will do the things and we will create our components there and we will write the logics regarding to the each file and just we will export there wherever we want that logics. We just we will import the things. That is the thing here. The main benefit is. And uh, finally, to understand this, I mean, component-based architecture, component-based architecture, we will uh, we will do one thing. Just now, <coughs> we will create a one uh, React application. Then it is very easy to understand you also, guys. Let's see. I will create a one uh, React application from here. Okay. Uh, let me go to the terminal here. Let me open. Let me open the terminal. And after opening the terminal, after opening the terminal, here I have to create the app. For that, to create the app, I have to use the command create react app. Create react app. Now I am keeping basic basic or demo. Let me keep it a demo. Demo. Demo class like this. I will give this. And this is the now. This is the command to create a React application. So here, this command npx command it will. I mean, uh, it will uh, not download the things. Just it will use this thing. Utilize the components like way which which uh, whichever the packages we want during the while doing the I mean while doing the code in React application. So I created the demo class. Uh, React application. So let me enter it. So after entering it, it will take some time actually. So I think my command is wrong here. Okay, let me do it again. I react spelling is wrong actually. So react react. Now let's see. I will enter again. Okay, uh, we have to wait a few minutes, like it will be taking, I mean, a long time, like minimum three to four minutes. So now if you see here, the demo class has been created. This is the React application, what we created here by telling this command like demo class, okay, it will be created here. See guys, uh, now if you see here, our React application, I mean, uh, has been created. Now let's see. <laughs> I said uh, the things, uh, the components based architecture. Let's see how it was. Let's see how it was. Okay, let's discuss. I mean, uh, let's discuss about the, how the things, I mean, modularity, code reuse, and isolation kind of things, encapsulation, and all those kind of things. Let's see, uh, by using this uh, component-based architecture, okay, uh, the modularity, if you see the best thing is modularity, okay, we will break down our code into small UI, I mean, small chunks of UI, uh, into smaller pieces, okay, let's see, uh, hey, now bar, sidebar, and uh, the main content and the footer like that, so it will make very manageable, okay, these chunks will, ma uh, to maintain the code and to debug the code or as well as to test the code 
okay to understand the code as well it is very easy and the main the main thing is code reuse okay we can reuse the same component across the different parts of our application let's see how we can use this uh, i mean component each component different parts let's see let i am creating now if we see here there are so many files app.js index.js so this index.js is the root js file okay this index.js is the root js file in the react okay here if you see there are uh, root dot render and all those kind of things now let me open the app.js okay it is a main js file main js file okay let me remove this thing let me remove this thing at the header part inside this okay now let me create one file here in navbar.jsx navbar.jsx okay i am creating the navbar.jsx by using the wrap key I mean, this will create a component here by by the name of character. This is the functional component, okay? This is the functional component. Basically, components are two types in React. Components are two types, which is component-based uh, architecture. I mean, sorry, functional components. These functional components, okay? These are very, uh, nowadays, we are using the functional components, okay? To, I mean, so many members are using these uh, functional components because <coughs> It is a preferred way to write the, oh, I mean, components nowadays. They are simpler, easier to understand, and uh, and they don't have their own choice, actually. Their own state, okay? They are just JavaScript uh, function that return what should be rendered on the screen based on the input. Let's see now, I created the nav bar here. Let me give the some style, some style here, style. Okay, I am giving the inline style here and I will make sure the height, it should be, it should be like 100 pixel, 100 pixel, okay, 100 pixel, I am giving here height is 100 pixel, 100 pixel and background color I will give, background color. Background color, I will give teal. Let me give the teal color. Let me give the teal color. Now, I had created, let me make it a H1 here. Control the C and I will uh, create one heading tag here. H1. I am creating the H1 here. Okay. Now, now this component is ready. Okay. This navbar component is ready. I am keeping here navbar. Okay, I'm keeping here now, but okay, now what happens here? Here, if you see, if you see, let me make it uh, by scratch. I'm copying this one. Let me remove these things, uh, how the things will work here. Okay, so how to create a functional component? Let, let's see, we have to use the function keyword is a function keyword. I am using the function keyword and I'm keeping the now, but now, but is the name of that function name of that function and I am returning here, I am returning here, I am returning this div element. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I used here a uh, small mistake. Let me do something like that. Instead of uh, brackets, I had to use the parenthesis brackets here and I had to return, I had to return this view. Okay, I am returning this view now. Now, now, I have to export it. I have to export this one. Okay. Uh, wherever we want to import some kind of things in other parts of our application, we have to export here. Okay. So, I will export. Export default now. Okay, this is the thing I am exporting now. This is the thing I am exporting now. Now imagine this app that this is the app that this is the landing page. So what I said actually, what I said here, here I am importing this one. I am importing this one. Let me import that file. What we are creating here, like already we had created a navbar.jsx. We give the height hundred pixel and background color teal. Now let's come here. Now let's come here. I am what I am doing here. Let me do one thing here. 
Okay, I am importing that function. Initially, we have to import to import the any kind of uh, component here. We have to use the import keyword, import, import, and the things we have to use never, never from the okay. It is a path. Okay, from this is the path actually. Okay, if you see here, this is the path of the file. So already we have created. Now, now I will call this one. I will call this never. I will call this never. Now let us see. I am calling this never. Let's go. Uh, let's go and check whether it was on the screen. It is there or not. Let's see. Okay. To start our application, to start our application, we have to use the npm run start. npm run start. Now it will. Now it will automatically it will uh, redirect to our. Uh, default browser in our local system so now for me it's microsoft Edge, so it will uh redirect to this uh, thing and uh, we can see the output how it was okay okay we had to wait something let's see see guys our output came now so we had created successfully now but okay this is one part this is one part uh where we had uh created a now but just see by single line of calling this uh, component so it is calling itself and it is rendering on the screen now see what happening here just what we did just nothing just we created a one component here this is the functional component i said uh, this uh, functional component we will uh, from base how we will be i said that thing as well uh, like by creating the function keyword by mentioning the name of that function we have to return okay we have to return this logic of this code and then it will we have to export it so now this this is one component this is one component so i created the navbar now no need to rewrite the code of this navbar just wherever i want this file for suppose if i want index dot or else any other app dot or else uh, any other pages also just just go there if i want here like just import that navbar related logic that component and just we have to call that component okay it automatically renders the screen renders on the screen okay now this is the i mean uh, i said uh, the code reuse the code reusable thing but suppose if i call another time another time let's see it will it will bind another time let's see let's save one let's go here let's go here if you see here same thing it is coming okay so this is the reusability i said this is the reusability okay this is the reusability let's see now now let's go to the wireframe now let's go to the wireframe so i said here reusable how now i showed you like how to build this reusable blocks of code by using the component based architecture so like that we have to create the components okay now the functional components completed the functional components completed now let's come to the class components let's come to the class components what i said as what i said in react in in react there are two types of components are there two types of components are there one is one is functional components functional components functional components which are javascript functions and second one is class functions class components class components see this class components after creating the react in 2013 if I'm not wrong, it was, uh, I mean, uh, developed by the Facebook, actually. So, at that time, initial stages of uh, this React, okay, the class components, they built with the, uh, by the class components only. So, at that time, uh, everyone used this uh, class components and the uh, time changes, uh, they make it more better, more better day by day. So, now we are using the functional components, which is easy, I mean, uh, to read the code easy. To write the code easy but here the class components are very complex kind of thing okay but it has its own state but function they don't have the own state okay 
state in the sense of to i mean to manipulate the data inside the, their own function so so there is that kind of state not there for the functional components but if you see here in the class components they have their own state and uh, they have their own state i mean to manipulate the data inside that component basically okay both are similar the particular uh, mainly the agenda is similar how the component renders and all those kind of things but the syntax is different okay the way is different the system is different while using the class components okay functional components are very easy just creating the function just we return these things okay they automatically by importing that by exporting and by importing we can easily render these things but if you come to the class components if you come to the class components okay we use it this thing in older versions nowadays majority members using the functional components okay they use class syntax and have access to life cycle methods for handling the different stages of the components existence okay okay how it means okay <clears throat> they are i mean uh, this class components are generally more complex i mean than functional components and uh, being recommended less nowadays i said uh, this is a uh, very normally so many members are not using nowadays so i will recommend very less this thing okay let's see uh, let's see how to create the class components as well okay now we know how to create the things uh, in the javascript class as well now let's come here let's come here instead of this function now what instead of this function now what this is the functional component i said and now we will create the class component now we will create the class component now how it will look like class we have to use the class keyword here and what we are creating here now what okay now what and extends 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 what we imported guys here here we imported the react okay react library from the react okay now let's come here we have it. so we are creating the component so react library has a component okay component kind of framework so let's see how it looks like react dot component if you see here there is a component as well okay now i have to use the parenthesis brackets same thing okay so functional component we return the logic but here but here this react dot component have itself render method okay the class itself have render method which is providing by the react library so we have to render it okay we have to call this method render render and render method by calling this thing i will return this okay i will return again i will return the things here i will return the div let me make it uh, copy sorry the div what we created here div okay let me give the style as well similar kind of style 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 uh based on the style i gave i think height 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 i gave something like 100 pixel 100 pixel we have to make it make sure we have to keep it in a double quotes actually so and background color background color i am using teal color teal color let's see and here i will keep the h1 it's one day it's one day it's one day and here i will give the never never let's see now i created a, this is the class component let this extends this extends inherits the properties of this react dot component okay wherever whatever it may be component it is coming from the it is coming from the react library this react library it is providing this one and inside this component this render method is there to take care about to render to display on the screen okay to display on the screen let's see now same thing i had used export default now but same thing uh, this is the same thing exporting the same thing let's see whether it uh, there or not now now let's go and see here if you see here now there is a now but now as well now let me change the name let me change the name let me change the name here instead of now but one it is a class component it is a 
it is a class component. I said it is a class component. Now let's see whether uh, the data is updated or not. If we see here, the, I mean, uh, the working of this both class component and as well as this uh, functional component is same, but the way of writing the syntax is different and the function is different kind of thing and class is different kind of thing. Okay, both are in, uh, we are getting from the JavaScript only. So, so the main thing is this class component have their own state actually, okay, their own state. Okay, itself it can change that uh, manipulate the data, but in functional component it is a different kind of thing where it uh, doesn't contain its state, so it uh, it have to depend on some kind of uh, hooks. Okay, for the functional component to maintain the state, we have to use the hooks. That is a use state, use reducer, use ref. These kind of states, I mean, uh, state uh, state maintaining hooks are there. This use state we will use generally to maintain the internal state of that component but here in the class component uh, there is no i mean uh, that kind of hooks i mean the, no necessary that kind of hooks because it has its own state uh, so that uh, there is no necessary that kind of hooks here okay uh, this is the i mean uh, components in react okay if you overview these components okay i said this uh, components are the components are the building blocks of uh, uh, react Components are the building blocks of React because uh, they represent independent, reusable, uh, reusable pieces of code. Okay, it can en encapsulate the specific part of uh, logic in the our UI layer. So it can do, it can break the uh, break the our application into small small things: navbar, sidebar, footer, card, whatever it may be. We can design it very easily, and we can reuse it across our application wherever you want and if you see and it is uh, very beneficial to maintain the code to maintain the uh, to maintain our application as well as to understand the code very easier and to test and as well as to debug also very easy by using these components okay and and encapsulation it's nothing uh, each components manages its own internal state and logic making it self-contained and independent actually this is the encapsulation Okay, and uh, after that, we had uh, talked about these uh, functional components and the class components. Okay, these uh, functional components are the, I mean, uh, new components because uh, in recently two, three years back only, we are using these uh, functional components, I think in 2018. So it has been uh, five years we are using since uh, these functional components uh, came into the market. And uh, before that, we used this only class components to create that. So see class, if you see here, the logic of the class and uh, it is very complex. It was a very small kind of thing. So it is uh, easy to do this thing. But if you, I mean, if you're creating a, a complex application, this um, class kind of uh, components, it will look very complex. But if you see here, uh, before what we created, uh, functional component is very easy. They're just by mentioning the function keyword and uh, just mentioning of the uh, function keyword as well as that the name of that function, just we will return the logic logic in the sense of the code what we want. Okay, that is the main things about this uh, class components and the functional components. Okay, and uh, let's discuss about another topic. Okay, uh, let's discuss about uh, this rendering process, how the rendering uh, works in React, how the rendering works in React. Let's see, uh, I will remove all those things, what we had created. Let's make it. Okay, let's, uh, now let's come to the what is the rendering. Okay, uh, if you see, if you see here, I will write this uh, thing rendering. What is the rendering? The main agenda. Okay. Uh, let's see. First, actually, we'll discuss orally. What is the render? Rendering is a uh, in React is the process of is the process of creating and updating the user interface. User interface is nothing. Just whatever the like use uh, appearing to the user. Okay. In if you take any application like Amazon, Flipkart, Netflix, Artstar. Wherever, if you open any application, just there, there we have 
I mean, uh, landing pages, the UI, the basic UI, user interface, whatever the thing appearing to the users. Okay, that is the that is the thing we call it as a UI layer. Okay, that UI, how the things will update. Okay, that is the thing rendering. Well, rendering is a React. Sorry, uh, rendering in React is the process of updating the updating the user interface, updating the user interface. For suppose, imagine uh, there was a something button. After clicking on that button, it has a redirecting to the another page. Or is, is there any color changing? Are the counter increases? All those kind of things occurring by this rendering process only, by this rendering mechanism. Okay. See, I can say this. Uh, <coughs> Function, I mean, components are the heart of art. Uh, I mean, I can say that components are the heart of the React. And this rendering process, okay, it is different when compared to this uh, rendering process. Normal HTML or uh, JavaScript is very different. So it have a two DOMs. Normally, index. Dot, I mean, normal by using the HTML and uh, JavaScript, it has only one uh, DOM actually. DOM in the sense of document object model. Okay. There is only one DOM. See, the main uh, demerit of to creating application by using the JavaScript and HTML. So it don't have a virtual DOM actually. It don't have a virtual DOM. Okay, but it have the React have a virtual DOM. Let me tell you what is a DOM. DOM is nothing but a document object model where the things, I mean, it acts like a remote between browser <coughs> Uh, while changing the element to manipulate any kind of things in the user interface, we have to get that elements now so that at that time we will use this DOM. Okay, so React rendering have a virtual DOM actually. Virtual DOM React directly doesn't manipulate the things inside the I mean uh, in the application in the I mean in the sense of DOM. So it has a virtual DOM. It is a lightweight DOM. It is a lightweight DOM. Okay. It will update the data. For suppose I am clicking on any button. So by clicking on that button, uh, something triggering means if the count is increasing at that time, let's suppose uh, count is increasing at that time. At that time, what it will happen? So, so it have it. I said React has a two DOMs. One is uh, original DOM and as well as virtual DOM. So in JavaScript and normal JavaScript and uh, HTML, how the things will work now, the rendering process. So whole DOM will be rerun. I mean, whole page will be refreshed at that time. All, whenever, if you change the only one kind of thing, the whole DOM will be updated again and again. So, but not here, not like that. In the React, there is a differ algorithm, diffing algorithm where Component state or the props change. React compares with the virtual uh, virtual DOM. That virtual DOM it will compare with the virtual DOM. So at that time, whatever it may be, small changes uh, happening in the virtual DOM, it will compare in the virtual. Only that things where the things changed in the uh, virtual DOM, it will compare the things virtual virtual DOM. It uh, changes only kind of thing, only that thing, whatever it may be changes. Let's see, mm, let's imagine it was a virginal DOM. It was a virginal DOM. It was a normal DOM, original DOM. I said original DOM. And here it is a, it is a virtual DOM. Virtual DOM, I said lightweight. Virtual DOM. Okay. So React has these two DOMs. So what happens the diffing algorithm? For suppose I changed any kind of button here, a button or else I am clicking on the button, the count has increased. Imagine the count has increased to 20 to 21. Let's say 20 to 21. Now, as I said, a normal in a normal in JavaScript and HTML applications, if one thing change, if one thing change, it will, it will. By default, it was. For suppose it was a by base, uh, it was a 20. Imagine it was a 20 count. Now, after clicking that, suppose, let me 
initially it was a 20 imagine initially it was a 20 now i click the one button the counter has increased 20 to 21 okay now if it was uh, imagine it was uh, built by this application whole application built by uh, i mean javascript and html whenever the changes the state changes i mean uh, 20 to 21 this whole whole dom will be i mean update once again it will re-render once again so it will affect the performance of application so so this react came with the two doms one is virginal dom and another one is virtual dom so now i am increased the 21 here from 20 to 21 so what happens now here there is a diffing algorithm diffing diffing algorithm diffing algorithm diffing algorithm where it will checks it will check the updates if there is any update like here it is update from 20 to 21 it has changed so it will tell to virginal dom only one node here this thing is updated so virginal dom will do only manipulates the that thing only okay instead of whole base i mean whole dom it will change only this thing so this is the thing okay it will efficiently update okay it will efficiently update the things in the ui so the finally uh, if we see it will increase the performance okay virtual dom and affecting this diffing leads to the fast and smooth updates actually so i can say that this uh, virtual dom will show i mean uh, more effect in rendering process i said rendering is the process of showing the ui on the display it's nothing but if you discuss in the general words showing the user interface on the display okay and the state is predictable by using this uh, rendering process the state is predictable react rendering is a deterministic making it is easier to reason about to debug our ui changes if I, something changed in my ui user interface it is very easily to debug actually by using this uh, i mean so sorry this rendering process so under structured components break down into i mean it's a different of components are based, i mean we had divided into small small chunks like navbar aside footer main content like that home base landing page like that uh, so many kinds of components are there just we by calling that this rendering process by combination of both of this process so it is very i mean uh, effective manner to create the application single page application so this is about the components okay this is about the components okay what we discussed components and rendering process if you see in the components, we discussed it about the functional and the class components, how it will work. I showed you, I mean, live code by taking this on hour and all those kind of things. And we discussed about the rendering, how the things will work, okay, how the virtual DOM making very different to other kind of libraries. Okay. Okay, guys, thanks. Uh, I mean, uh, this is the topics for today. Okay, I am wrap up this session right now. Okay, thanks for joining everyone.